and pal excelled at all of them. He gained a reputation as a bit of a maverick. Buff became one of the army's youngest colonels. In 1899, the Boer War broke out. Baden Powell was sent to South Africa under orders to engage the enemy in the north of the region with the help of local recruits. It soon became clear the advancing Boers had superior manpower, so Baden Powell decided to hold out in the town of Mafeking. Even 70 years later, Baden Powell's exploits at Mafeking could inspire small boys, including me. I wrote a, a project about the Boer War when I was 11. I wrote, Baden-Powell, though remembered for the Boy Scouts, is hardly ever given credit for his defence of Mafeking. Not strictly true, but it's sort of controversial opening. It's very important in histories. Um, he got the men to obey him to the letter, and they succeeded doing as they were told. He baffled the enemy with bluff and tactics. And here he is. About to do it. Right from the outset, Baden-Powell was heavily outnumbered. There were about 2,000 armed men in Mafeking. 1,100 of them whites, the rest natives, and only about a quarter of all of them had any sort of military training. These lot were facing 6,000 boars. This was no ordinary engagement, and it tested Baden-Powell as a leader and a strategist. It also crystallised the ideas that would later form the core of scouting for boys. Baden-Powell was assisted in his defence of the town by an unlikely force, a group of boys. Gathered together before the siege started, they became a sort of unofficial cadet corps. They performed a vital role taking messengers between the various defenders, uh, often on bicycles and under fire. In later life, Baden-Powell would recount the stirring story of the cadets at Mafeking to inspire English boys. I said to one of these boys on one occasion, you will get hit one of these days riding about like that when shells are flying. And he replied, I pedal so quick, sir, they'd never catch me. Would any of you do that? Much of Baden-Powell's subsequent reputation was based not on his complex military strategies, but his use of tricks and ruses to try and fool the balls into thinking the British were better equipped than they were. Um, they didn't have any minds, um, but Baden-Powell got these men to walk out beyond the perimeter, carrying big black boxes, and then to bury them deep in the sand at intervals. Then later on, he let off a stick of dynamite in the same area, and the balls were convinced they were laying a minefield. Another of his tricks was to stake out all these posts um, along the front and then to have men moving between them as if they were laying barbed wire. Um, they weren't, because they didn't have any barbed wire, but the Boers couldn't see that, and so they believed that the whole of this front here was fortified. Again, I mean, it was a sort of slightly bonkers, but a brilliantly effective ruse. Despite such daring innovations, Baden-Powell's problems magnified the town was shelled. Many were injured or died. Horses were killed for meat and food was heavily rationed. Yet convinced he must lead by example, Baden-Powell's positive attitude remained unshaken. People expect you to be able to give them an idea of how long they're going to be in this position and whether the food's going to hold out. And you effectively have to, to pretend to be omniscient. You have to be ultra calm. And um, Baden-Powell had been a very successful amateur actor, and he knew what was required. He could act really cool. The siege lasted for 216 days, but throughout it, Baden-Powell's performance, because in a sense that's what it was, was extraordinary. He managed to maintain not only a stiff upper lip, but a smile as well. When he wasn't pulling stunts against the Boers, he was putting on plays in the town or staging games. 
And when the public at home heard about his exploits, they glowed with pride. This was true British grit. Bravos for BP. Ring, ring, the bells ring. Bravos, bravos, bravos. For Martha King's King, our hero. When Maffa King was finally relieved in May 1901, the nation erupted with joy. Baden-Powell was proclaimed a national hero. To die for our duty, our fortune may be, and we'll never give in, said BP. The British may have been the ultimate victors, but the Boer War had left the nation badly shaken. Mafeking was one redeeming highlight in an otherwise undistinguished colonial war. And one of the reasons the British Army performed so badly was that compared to the Boers, the healthy, outdoor farmers turned soldiers, the British troops had been weak and sickly. The Director General of the War Office had even issued a memo warning that between 40 and 60 percent of the men trying to enlist had been declared unfit for service. The Edwardian establishment was terrified that after a century of rapid industrialization, Western society might be, in their words, degenerating. A deeply influential book at the time was Max Nordau's Degeneration, which saw in modern urban culture a kind of frantic pace that he believed would lead to the decline of the West. The dead, carried off by heart and nerve diseases, are the victims of civilization, the consequences of states of fatigue and exhaustion, of the vertigo and whirl of our frenzied life. The Victorian factories had made the nation wealthy, but they'd also manufactured an urban underclass. Undernourished and under-exercised, their offspring were now the Edwardians' problem. Some thinkers even suggested that degeneracy was heretical.